We flew home and we flew to Boston. We had an appointment with Dr. Sugarbaker. Dr. Sugarbaker did meet with Andrew and he pulled out some of the fragments and also the tests that were done in Hawaii. He explained to him that unfortunately the fragments of the mesothelioma had dropped off into his stomach lining and that they were moving rapidly. He also stated to us that at this time that it wasn't wise to have another surgery back to back like that. Well, the first thing I said to Dr. Sugarbaker is, okay, so where does this leave us? What, you know, what happens at this point? He said, well, we've done pretty much everything that we can do. You just don't know how I felt at that moment. It was like I could have ripped up the hospital. I could have ripped up everybody that said something to me. I mean, it was just a flashback of my life from A to Z. Here I thought that I would be living with a mate happily ever after. And the whole time Andrew really never said anything. And I know that he was in deep, deep, deep thoughts. I was doing all of the talking at the time. We went back to the hotel in silence. He said, well, Tanya, you want to go out and get something to eat? But he didn't talk about it. He didn't want to talk about it. I couldn't even eat. I couldn't. Like, I don't know how to tell my kids. I don't even know how to tell myself. Dr. Sugarbaker never gave him a time or anything like that. He just said, you know, go home and he was going to give us some medicine and that was pretty much it. We flew back to Detroit to tell our family. My daughter, no, no way. My kids, uh uh, me, no way. But every single day, I could see it taking effect on my husband. 